trainers and welcome back to my channel. Thank you very much for joining me. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Heather and it's a pleasure to have you here today. What we are going to be doing is a makeup look inspired by the Pokemon Raticate and that was requested in the comments of my last Pokemon inspired look which was Galarian Ponyta. If you haven't seen that video feel free to go back and take a look. I'll actually pop a link up here somewhere up here and you can click on that and uh, it will take you back and you can watch that at your viewing pleasure. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do it so we're just gonna clean my skin and we're gonna smash the primer on and then we're just gonna do it let's go let's go okay so the primer I'm using today is this Smashbox photo finish super light smooth and blur I'm using the number seven stay perfect foundation in shade porcelain and I'm just gonna pop that on this beauty blender and then just pop that around my eyes only to prep them for eyeshadow. I know that you can get proper eye primers and stuff for this bit, but I don't have any. So you gotta improvise. And this is how we're doing it. By hodgepodging all the stuff you already have together and praying for the best. Now I've done that, I'm just going to put some powder on the top. <gasps> Where's my brush? Here. And I'm just gonna put that on the top of my eyelid again to help prep for my eyeshadow. I don't know why this is so oily. Ooh. This was a palette that I bought ages ago, like literally years ago when I was first getting into makeup. And for some reason, I was really afraid of color. Maybe that's the thing that, I don't know, you're like when you first get into makeup, but this is the brownest palette I've ever seen in my life. Look how brown this is. I hated it so much that I was gonna give this away. The girl that I was gonna give it away to convinced me to keep it and I'm actually glad she did. So San, if you're watching, thank you very much because it's actually perfect for today's look. I'm gonna start by going in with this color here and just popping that on the, I don't know, like this bit, this big bit here. Okay, so I changed my mind. I want to go a bit deeper, so I'm going to go in with this one instead. So what has everybody been doing whilst they've been locked away in the pandemic? What have you guys been up to? I would like to know. Me, personally, I have been playing a lot of Animal Crossing, which if you follow me on Instagram, I'm sure you have seen my Instagram stories. At the moment, I'm in the middle of terraforming my entire island to make it exactly how I want it to be. And I have three villagers ready to move out. So I have this rule, right, with my villagers. Once they give me their picture, they can leave, but they cannot leave before then. Unless you are hippo, in which case, GTFO, do not darken my door again. But at the moment, I've got Lopez, Kitty and Boone all ready to move out. I don't know if I have any dream villagers. I think some are very aesthetically pretty. I really like Dom, for example. Dom is really cute, like the little rainbow sheep. I like Bob because I like cats and Bob is just like iconic Animal Crossing character. I actually quite like the novelty of some ugly characters. And a couple of days ago, I actually recorded a video of me making myself up as Hazel, the squirrel with the massive unibrow. That was really fun. And I've done another one of a hamster whose name I've now forgotten, but I'm gonna be posting that up soon so you can keep an eye out on my Instagram for that video. I'm just gonna go in with this shade and put it in my crease. Please feel free to ask me for my friend code on Animal Crossing because I will happily give it to you. I would love more people to play with and trade with. Other things I've been doing to occupy my time during quarantine include coloring in. I have a bunch of coloring in books. I find them very therapeutic. I've got some Harry Potter ones and some Terry Pratchett ones. And I've just recently completed a Forks the Phoenix. And I also bought a cross stitch kit. I wanted to learn how to crochet at one point, but that kind of fell by the wayside. I never really like followed up with that, but maybe I should start that again. 
But here's the thing, there's no pressure to come out of this quarantine with any kind of new skill. If you want to chill, just chill. If you want to learn a new language, learn a new language. Just do you. Using this shade here, I'm just going to pack this onto the outer corner of my eye. Okay, well, we're learning the lesson of compromise today and we're going to settle for a rubbish brush that is not the brush I was using yesterday, but apparently I've lost that brush, so... I'm going to do a cut crease using this Tarte Creaseless Concealer. I think I used this before when I did a cut crease on my Clefairy look. I can't really remember. I remember this hurting my eyes a look. <laughs> it's not going to be a full eyelid. It's just going to be the first maybe two thirds. I need to concentrate so I'm not going to speak. I've just done this eye so far. I'm trying really hard not to get it on my upper eyelid, like my hooded eyes. I'm just gonna take this shade and pop it on uh, the concealer. Uh. So you might be able to see that I did unfortunately get it on the top there, but we can smudge that out. So I'm not too worried just yet. I'm just gonna do that other side as well and then hopefully it will be kind of equal. Okay, I need to get rid of this here. I'm just gonna take the second shade that I use and brush that over and it should hide it quite nicely. Oh, you can see it disappearing. Yeah. So we're just gonna take the same brush and blend that brown over the edge there. Finally, the last part of my eyelid, I'm just going to use this very dark eyeshadow just here. Is that in focus? Yes, it is. And I'm just going to use a more precise brush to just pop that in and pack it in to the corner of my eyelid, which will hopefully give it more depth. And we'll just blend that out. Blend, blend, blend. I've discovered who the Walmart edition eye is going to be this episode and it is the right eye. I've smudged the black too far up I think and it's kind of smushed into the like white section but this eye I think is looking pretty good still. Everything looks better once you put the eyelashes on. That's the thing. That's what we've got to remember. For my face today I'm going to be using number seven Stay Perfect foundation and the Tarte Careless Concealer, which I'd used on my eyes. Normally I would apply my foundation using a beauty blender. Recently I've been changing it up and I've been using a brush to apply my foundation instead. And I've been using this one, which is from It Cosmetics. For some reason, I just find it slightly more fun to apply with a brush. Oh, what? Oh no, that's just more spots. What's next? I don't know. This is Lime Crimes. I like all the text has come off of this. It's Lime Crimes Bushy Brow Gel in Redhead. And every time I use this, I either come away from it loving it or come away from it hating it. The application is horrible, but I like how it looks afterwards. It's just such a weird product. I don't like it, but I do like it. But that's what I'm gonna use for my eyebrows anyway. I bought a bunch of spoolies from Amazon the other day because I was watching Glow Up. Oh, there's a new season of Glow Up. It's so good. If you are into makeup, please start watching Glow Up. It's on BBC iPlayer. Uh, a new season just started like three weeks ago. So I think there's only three episodes up of season two, but the entirety of season one is up already. It's such a good show. I love it. I knew that I wanted to do faux freckles for this look, but I was really struggling to create them and make them look realistic. And the other day on Glow Up, they had a challenge where they had to create faux freckles. And one of the contestants created them by using some kind of like brown liquid with, and then flicking the liquid on the face with a spoolie. And so I bought a bunch of spoolies from Amazon to try and recreate that. And I was not able to do that, but now I've got a bunch of leftover spoolies. So 
I don't know, I'll still try and research and figure out how they did it. But I figured out another way to do freckles anyway, which you'll see in a second when I get round to it. So this is the applicator on the Lime Crime bushy brow thing. It's like a little mascara wand, but it's just so broad. It's quite hard to place this precisely. This is what you're left with. It's like, it looks okay, but you can see here, when I was applying it, I smushed it underneath my eyebrow. And that is very annoying. I want big bushy eyebrows for this look. So I'm just gonna brush them up. Did I just brush all the product out of that? I, maybe. <laughs> my Mac needed charging again. So I went downstairs, had dinner, came back up, and now we're gonna do freckles, yes. I did try using a couple of different methods when it came to creating faux freckles. However, I found that the best one was just using this Freck product, which I've had for a while now. The best way that I found to use this product is to just dab a couple on my skin and then just use my fingertip to just dab, 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 and then like dab elsewhere. And then what happens is that it makes it look more natural, but also gives you more freckles so i'm just gonna apply those to the area of my face just here where the sun would kind of naturally hit kind of across my nose and then on my forehead as well the idea of this look is to look quite sun kissed so i'm going to be using freckles bronzer some blush to kind of build that up over the next couple of steps It took me a while to finesse making them look really natural. I think I could still probably practice a little bit more, but I think these look pretty good. So the next thing I'm gonna do is to use some bronzer. I'm using this bronzer butter I got in Canada. I'm just going to pop that on now. This stuff smells amazing, by the way. I watched a tutorial on the correct way to apply bronzer on the Sephora website, and it actually helped me so much. So. I would highly recommend that. I think it was actually the Sephora YouTube site, not the actual website. I don't know, but it had this wonderful man teaching you how to use bronzer and literally it worked wonders. Just gonna pop a bit on my nose as well. And then just frame my forehead. You're definitely not supposed to use bronzer for contouring, but oh well, here I go on my dum dum juice. Because we want to look sun kissed and a bit burnt, I'm just going to use this super pink blush from my very loved Makeup Revolution blush palette slash highlighter palette. And then we're just going to apply this to the area where we put the freckles, but we're actually going to bring it up to the nose and over as well. Kind of gonna go for the e-girl look. I'm gonna be a cute e-girl today. You can see the blush starting to build up. I always get too scared in case I go overboard and then I just end up looking ridiculous. But girl, you gotta be brave sometimes. You gotta take that leap. Two seconds later. Oh, oh it's too much. I'm scared. Oh. Do we think more pink on the nose? Oh, I don't. I don't know. Does this look okay? Oof. The eyes, well, let's just finish the eyes now. I'm gonna use this Grand Fate Order brown eyeliner that I received in my Japanese subscription box from No Make No Life. And I'm just gonna do the like eyeliner on the top of my lid. As always, I can't do like proper flicky eyeliner. So it's just gonna be like a line. They are done. And then we're gonna go back to the Morphe palette and we're gonna take the second shade, which was um, this one. We're just gonna pop that underneath my eye so that we can just get that all finished up, you know, looking really nice. You know whose videos I have been watching a lot of lately on YouTube? Brittany Broski. She is a funny girl and I really, really like her. She needs to put out more videos. I've been binging a lot of YouTube and between her and internet comment etiquette, I 
have pretty much watched all of their back libraries, although I've been watching Commentica for like a long time. I'm new to Britney, although I think she's relatively new to YouTube herself. But if you do have any good recommendations for new channels, please put them in the comments below because I really need some new content. I'm just going to do my eyelashes now. Ah, pinch myself every time. Ah, and voila. No, I didn't put my scent spray on. Oh my God, every time. Oh. <laughs> the trouble that I had with this look was highlighter. I didn't know what color to use. I had some like golden highlighter. Actually, let me just, instead of using words, let me use the visual medium of video. So I had this, however, when I put it on, it just made me look a bit grubby and I didn't really like it that much. Maybe I'll just use a more neutral one. I think this one. Yeah. Does this count as neutral? Probably not. Oh well. Now is the time for eyelashes. <laughs> for lips today, we are using this lip paint from L'Oreal Paris and it's in Nude on Fleek because my nude is always on fleek. Lipstick on the teeth, sexy. The makeup is done. I like to incorporate wigs into these Pokemon looks. So when I was doing Raticate, I was thinking to myself, okay, I mean, Raticate's brown and I guess white. So that's kind of what I've done with the eyes, done a lot of brown, done the white cut crease, brown lipstick, and I was thinking, well, I've kind of got auburn hair anyway. Don't really want to get a wig for that. But then I realized that if I just got a massive ponytail extension wig thing, I could give myself a rat tail inspired hair thick cut. Like, oh my God, I don't even know at this point. Anyway, let me show you what I bought. So it's this whole mess of hair, right? You basically put it on your ponytail like this and then it gives you a whole long ponytail and i was like oh yeah like a rat tail because like radicate has a rat tail it really hurts uh, it's really heavy i don't know how ariana grande wears this day in and day out without her entire scalp of hair falling out i watched some videos on how to apply this properly i still don't <laughs> i still can't really do it properly i'm gonna try again to put it on for the video and we'll just see how this goes. Okay, I'm gonna brush it first though. The first thing you're supposed to do is put your hair up in a super high ponytail. I saw this hack where you can use this second band a little bit further up, which will give the ponytail extra height. And then it has this clip thing and you put, put it, And this is the kind of hard part. You put it there, but this is when the Velcro starts attaching to your own head and it's incredibly painful. None of the tutorials showed any of the girls. Ah, in pain. Ah, ow. We're having to detach their own hair from this monstrosity. Okay, wait. When you've done it, Take some clips, some bobby pins, and you slide it down. And apparently, this should secure it. Oh my god, have I done it? No. Oh no, it's gonna come out. Okay, I think I've done it. I am in quite a lot of pain right now. It's messy as all hell. Like it's, it's never gonna stand. This is as close as what I'm gonna get to this being on my head. I'm gonna move very slowly. I'm gonna scoot backwards so that you can see what this looks like. It looks really good, but it's just super painful. Uh, I can feel it slipping. It's really cute. I wish I had hair like this. I feel so cute. Uh, nope, don't lean back. I actually love it. 
I do wish I had hair like this. Look how cute this is. Oh, I got long hair. Oh my God. I'm Ariana Grande. Oh, whoops. I'm also breaking stuff. Wait, ready? Watch this. What? 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 I redid the hair and it's actually way more secure now. It seems to be more steady on the head. I did my hair in a bun as a placement rather than a ponytail and that seems to be better so I'm still trying not to move around too much and I am still in a lot of pain. I don't know how anyone could wear this for any length of time without genuinely just crying but you know for the for the look it's fine it's you know I'm happy with how it is uh, how it's come out and the colour match is like really good as well. I guess all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching if you've made it this far. Ratake is quite a bland palette, brown, white, you know, a little bit of pink, but hopefully that's all come across in the look today. If you are happy with the look and how it's come out, please do feel free to leave a comment below and like the video as well. It would be really cool to see the feedback there. And if you wanna see upcoming videos, then do subscribe as well. You get amazing content like me pulling my own hair out of my scalp and me throwing my camera around mid video. Like where else can you find content like that on YouTube? The level of professionalism on this channel is just sometimes too high. If you want to choose the next Pokemon that I will be creating a makeup look for, remember that you have to leave a comment below. The first person to leave a comment with a Pokemon, that is the next Pokemon look I'm gonna do. So please make sure that you leave a comment. Otherwise, I've got nothing to do. I'm just gonna be like twiddling my thumbs. Well, actually I'll be just playing Animal Crossing, let's face it, because I'm addicted. We've established that. I need help. I'm gonna go now and try and detangle this huge amount of hair from my own hair, which may take me a while. So whilst I do that, you guys make sure that you have an amazing day, stay safe, and I will see you next time. Bye now.